Okay, so hopefully by now uh, you've watched the first lecture on matrices and vectors where we introduced some language that uh, described um, matrices and vectors and we introduced some operations. Um, I'd like to now walk you through uh, the computer algebra system, or at least introduce you to the computer algebra system SAGE, uh, which I personally use to um, uh, manipulate matrices and vectors. Um, and so you can do so as follows. So here uh, you're looking at the uh, landing page for our uh, course website. Um, You'll find, uh, of course, the first lecture was matrices and vectors. Um, and if we click on uh, this little uh, tab here that, or this little button here that says Sage, this will take us um, to an area of the web page where I have a bunch of calculators essentially for us. Um, so uh, Sage is a computer algebra system written in Python that does tons and tons and tons of different mathematical things. Um, but one of the things it's pretty good at is um, uh, working with uh, linear algebraic things like matrices and vectors. So I want to walk through a, a few of the cells that I've predefined here, just to sort of acquaint you with um, the, some of the basic things that Sage can do. Okay, so um, the first thing that I've input here is just the basic syntax one uses to define a matrix in Sage. So um, uh, Sage uh, allows us to, to define matrices through the syntax matrix open parentheses, and then what we do is we list all of the rows um, inside of uh, these brackets here. So this syntax is designed to define a matrix who rows are, whose rows are 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. Uh, so before I click this evaluate button to show you what that matrix looks like, just think for a moment about what that matrix looks like. Well, we're inputting two rows. So this matrix has two rows. And each one of those um, uh, two rows uh, has three entries, so this matrix should end up having three columns. And um, I've predefined that matrix in this cell. Um, and then I, on this third line here, I have this print statement, which will print out the matrix. So let's click evaluate. Great. So uh, we see that there's um, an output here, and it simply says A equals the matrix that we just input. Um, you can play, I, I encourage you to play around with this yourself. So you can, you're certainly free to delete the code that I've written. Um, and uh, so you could just redefine the matrix to be anything you want. Um, so let's say that you wanted to define a new matrix with maybe uh, more rows and more columns. So here I'll just uh, put some uh, entries in the first row. So maybe zero, negative one, uh, 87. Uh, I'll smash the keyboard and get a giant number in here. Uh, and then here's another giant number. Um, so that's my first row. I'm inputting that between parentheses. And then um, I'll put a comma here, and then I'll start my next row. Um, all the rows need to have the same number of coordinates. So it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five coordinates here. So I need five more coordinates. Let's do 78, 37, 19, negative 47. And then I'll just mash the keyboard and get another number here. Um, one, two, three, four. So that's five numbers. Uh, let's close the parentheses. Uh, maybe there's another row that's just one, two, three, four, five, and maybe I'll put in one more row, um, negative 99, 9, um, 12, 12, 1, um, uh, 0. So that looks like it has five coordinates, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, good. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to close my bracket that is uh, uh, start that started the list of all the rows, and then I'll close my last parentheses to uh, close the matrix. I still have my print statement here uh, that I had predefined. Uh, and again, this pre -sta print statement is just designed to take the uh, matrix we de just defined as the variable A and print it out. So if I click evaluate, um, now we see that big horrible matrix that I just defined um, uh, uh, printed out here. Um, since I input four rows, this matrix is uh, a four by whatever matrix, and what, the number of columns is five because each row had five entries. Uh, so that's just the basic syntax for uh, defining a matrix. My goal is um, to make this uh, 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 this Sage stuff accessible enough so that you're doing lots of stuff with it, Sage. So you'll probably be using this syntax a lot. Um, I can't remember if I just delete this print statement and click A. I wonder what happens when click evaluate. Yeah. So if you if you just deleted the print statement that I had in there and just uh, write A, it'll um, print out the matrix, um, but it doesn't have A equals which I had in the print statement. So. Um, uh, now remember, matrices can be summed, scaled, and transposed. Um, so here we have the syntax for adding two matrices together, for scaling a matrix, and for transposing a matrix. This is essentially exactly what you would expect. Uh, to add two matrices together, we just define a matrix A, 
define a matrix B and then input A plus B. Um, remember to add matrices together, they have to have the exact same size. So the code will throw an error if they're not the same size. Um, we can scale a matrix by just taking our number and then writing star A. Um, this will take A and then scale every entry by the number we're using. And then the syntax for transposition is um, dot capital T. Um, this will take our matrix and then interchange the rows and the columns. So in this example in the box here, the predefined code that I put in, um, I define a matrix A, I define a matrix B, and then um, the first line will tell us what A plus B is, the second line will tell us what two times A is, and the third line will tell us what A transpose is. So let's click evaluate. And good, so um, here the first matrix uh, had two rows and three columns. The entries were one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the second matrix B had two rows and three columns. The entries were three, negative seven, four, five, nine, six. When I add those together, I get uh, four, negative five, seven, nine, um, 14, 12. Uh, when I scale A by the number two, I just go through the original matrix A, whose entries were one, two, three, four, five, six, and I double every entry. Uh, and then to transpose, uh, again, I'm viewing these rows now as columns. So for A, the first row was one, two, three. For A transpose, the first column is one, two, three. And for A, the second row is four, five, six. For A transpose, the second column is four, five, six. Um, again, you can just feel free to delete all the predefined code that I have in there and play around with this yourself. So maybe we want to define a matrix, uh, I don't know, one, negative seven, uh, that's the first row, here's another row, 3, 2, here's another row, uh, 11, and then some giant number. Um, so I'm predefining a matrix like this. So here we have three rows, each row has two entries, which means this is a, um, a 3 by 2 matrix. And if I just put A here and clicked Evaluate, it would print out that matrix. Um, and then I can play around with this all I want. Maybe I wanted um, 3 times A. Um, if I click that, uh, it'll print out three times A here. Uh, if I wanted, um, uh, maybe, I, maybe I wanted, I would want to transpose A before I multiply by some number negative seven. Um, so to do that, I would write negative seven star A dot T, click evaluate, um, that transposes the matrix and then multiplies every entry by negative seven. Um, and let's say that I try to do something silly. Uh, A here is t uh, three by two. So let's say that I tried to add A to its own transpose. Well, A is three by two, but A transpose should be two by three. So if I tried to add these together, what happens? Well, the code throws an error. Um, and uh, the problem here is that I can't add matrices with two different sizes. Great. Um, we all, in the lecture, we also discussed a bunch of different properties or, or adjectives that may or may not apply to a matrix. Um, so the general syntax one uses when working with Sage uh, to, to check whether or not a certain property applies is a dot, whatever the property name is, open close parentheses. Um, so in the predefined code here, I've defined some matrix. It looks like this is a three by three because there are three rows, each with three entries. And um, I'm printing out a bunch of things that the, might work for the matrix. So um, the first thing that's going to print out is it's going to say number of rows of A. And then here the syntax is A dot in rows. That tells us the number of rows. Um, the second line will tell us the number of columns. And the syntax for that would be A dot in calls. Uh, the, uh, the third line here will tell us what the diagonal is. So remember the diagonal of a matrix are, is the vector of numbers that occur on the, um, on the uh the entries that have the same row and column index. Uh, remember the trace of a matrix is the sum of the diagonal. So this will print out the trace and the syntax here is a dot trace. Um, and then the last line here will tell us whether or not the matrix is symmetric. Um, the syntax here is a dot is underscore symmetric. And remember uh, a matrix is symmetric if it's transpose equals itself. So um, let's click evaluate and just see uh, what develops here. So for whatever matrix I defined, um, it looks like this is telling me that the number of rows is three. The number of columns is also three. The diagonal of this matrix is one, five, negative nine. The trace is 15, which you'll recognize as one plus five plus nine. And then the question is, is asymmetric? Well, the answer here is false. 
um, the, uh, the transpose of this matrix is not equal to itself. So even though I've predefined code here, um, you can sort of uh, play around with it. So let's say you wanted to define a matrix yourself. Uh, I'm just going to do something silly. Um, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six here. So here again, I have the matrix from a previous example, two rows and three columns. And let's say after I did that, for whatever reason, I wanted to remind myself uh, what the number of rows is. I could just write that here and click evaluate. And it uh, tells me two, this matrix has two rows. Um, maybe uh, I wanted, uh, what, what, what was another thing we did here? Um, maybe we want to figure out um, if this matrix is symmetric. Uh, so let's type in a dot is symmetric and click evaluate. And the answer is false. Um, this matrix is very far from being symmetric. Uh, for one symmetric matrices, um, because the transpose equals itself has to have to always be square. And this matrix isn't even square. So. Great. Um, in addition to uh, looking up whether or not certain um, adjectives apply to a matrix, there are also pre-defined uh, constructors inside of Sage. Um, so the ones that I've listed here are zero matrix, ones matrix, identity matrix, and diagonal matrix. So the idea is that like, if we want to construct the 30 by 30 or you know, 10 by 20 zero matrix, it would be quite annoying to just sit there and type all of these zeros in the appropriate places. Um, instead, we could just use this syntax zero underscore matrix. So the first line of code here defines a matrix called Z, which is the three by four zero matrix. So that's nice. Um, let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to fill up a matrix with all ones. Um, well, if we wanted to do that, uh, we could use this syntax ones underscore matrix. So here I'm defining A to be the six by three matrix where every single entry is equal to one. Maybe that'll be useful, who knows? Um, Remember, one of the most important matrices there is, is the n by n identity matrix. We're going to be working with this matrix all the time of various different sizes. So again, it would be annoying to write all those entries. Uh, remember, we have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Uh, keeping track of that is really annoying. Instead, if I wanted to find the nine by nine identity matrix, I use this syntax, uh, identity underscore matrix nine. Um, and I'm defining that here as this matrix I. And uh, also diagonal matrices are important things, um, uh, especially toward the end of the course, we'll be working with uh, diagonal matrices. A diagonal matrix has potentially interesting things on the diagonal, but zeros everywhere else. Again, that's annoying to input by hand. So uh, uh, Sage has a predefined constructor for this. Uh, to define a diagonal matrix, we write diagonal underscore matrix, and then we write out the list of uh, numbers we want on the diagonal. And here I'm defining, I'm storing that as a variable called D. Um, and then the predefined code I have here uh, prints all this information out. So if we just click evaluate here, um, the three by four zero matrix is exactly what we input up here. Um, the six by three ones matrix is uh, this, well, matrix that has six rows and three columns all with ones in it. Uh, the nine by nine identity matrix is this matrix with nine rows and nine columns with ones on the diagonal. Uh, so you can see that's a rather large matrix that I defined in one very small line of code. Um, and finally, this diagonal matrix, uh, this one's three by three, uh, where the diagonal has negative seven, nine, and five on the diagonal. And that was efficiently constructed um, in this fourth line of code here. So again, I have predefined code here, uh, but you could mess around with this yourself. Uh, let's say that you wanted a really big diagonal matrix. Um, so diagonal matrix um, I'm defining here as D. Uh, so let's say that numbers on the diagonal were like one, zero, negative 80, 877, this giant number, which doesn't need to start with a zero, um, uh, 13, negative 11, negative 11, 13, I don't know, 109. Um, so now we have a rather large diagonal matrix. I can click, oh, I haven't done anything with it though. Um, let's just uh, uh, type D here and click evaluate. That tells, uh, this will print out that giant matrix we just constructed. And again, this, this matrix is really big, but it didn't take me very long to define because uh, of the syntax that's uh, pre-built into the language. So that's nice. Um, let's see, it looks like I have a couple more boxes here. Uh, we can work with vectors in a really similar way. So uh, the syntax here is vector, open parentheses, open brace, and then you just list the coordinates. So in this predefined code, I've defined the vector one, two, three, four. And this print statement will just print out the vector. Uh, so if I click evaluate, this tells me that the vector v that I defined is equal to one, two, three, four. 
Uh, note that in, in, in this language, when we're working with vectors, we're working with parentheses and then the coordinates separated by commas. When we talk about vectors in class, we're referring to uh, column uh, vectors that are uh, 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 marked off by um, uh, uh, square braces. Um, the math here isn't different. It's just a notational thing in the language. Uh, again, you can mess around with this. If you, let's say you, for whatever reason, cared about the vector, um, oops, um, you know, negative seven, eight, 87, 13, nine, four, four. Um, maybe there's a zero there. Uh, you could define that vector and then just um, write V and this will print out the vector that uh, you defined. Um, we discussed uh, scaling vectors or adding vectors and scaling vectors. So of course, if two vectors have the same size or same number of coordinates, we can add them coordinate by coordinate. Uh, and we can scale any vector by any number by just taking every coordinate and multiplying by that number. Um, and again, the, 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 the big punchline from the lecture was uh, the idea of a linear combination. So what I've pre-built uh, in the code uh, cell here is three vectors, and then I've defined three numbers. And what I'm doing is I'm going to construct a linear combination from this data. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and click evaluate and so we can see the output here. So uh, the, so here I have three vectors that I've just like, I just wrote them in here. Um, and then I have three numbers, nine, negative three, six. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the first number multiplied by the first vector, add the second number multiplied by the second vector, and then add the third number multiplied by the third vector. Uh, and when I do all that, apparently what I end up with here is the vector negative 9, 21, 24, 15. Um, so again, you should view this as a convenience because if you want to do like lots of this stuff by hand, um, of course, you know, you know how to do arithmetic, but the computer knows how to do it better. So um, I always do my stuff on a computer uh, because I'm not that good at arithmetic. Uh, finally, uh, this is this is this was the punchline of the of the last lecture. Um, linear combinations are more elegantly written in terms of matrix vector products. So we can take any matrix and multiply by any vector as long as that vector has the number of coordinates that's equal to the number of columns of the matrix. So here, what I've done is uh, I've defined a matrix here. This matrix has one, two, three, four rows, and each um, row has, has three entries, so this matrix has three columns. I can take that four by three matrix and multiply it by any vector in R3 because the number of columns is three. So I've defined a vector V here to be the vector nine, negative three, six. So that has three entries. And now I'm going to multiply this matrix by this vector. Uh, let's click evaluate and see what happens. Uh, so it says A times V is the vector negative nine, 21, 24, 15. And um, what I'm intending for uh, you to notice here is if you actually look at this matrix, so maybe I'll, I'll uh, put the matrix here. Um, if you look at this matrix, you'll find that the columns of this matrix that um, we're working with are exactly the vectors that we defined in the previous cell. And if you look at this vector, this vector is storing the numbers nine, negative three, six, which are exactly the numbers we used to generate our linear combination on the previous cell. So before I, I, I went through all the trouble of typing out C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 and so on. But here um, I'm more elegantly presenting the formula by storing all of those vectors in this matrix and then storing all of the scalars in this vector and simply calculating A times V. And, and that gives me the same result. So negative nine, 21, 24, 15, is the same as um, the result here. Okay, so that's a sort of a brief introduction to the language. Um, there's lots and lots and lots to say. Uh, I want to mention that um, I really do intend all of you to use this as sort of a calculator tool um, rather than as a coding thing. We're, this isn't a course about um, coding algorithms. We will analyze some algorithms later, but um, we're not going to be doing any coding. So I don't want you to be intimidated by the syntax. Rather, I want you to view this as um, a tool that will help you do like problems. Um, if you're working on a problem and you want to take some big matrix and multiply it by, by a vector, the last thing you want to do is uh, do all that by hand. It's a waste of your time and frankly a waste of mine because um, you know inevitably people end up making mistakes even though they know how it's supposed to work. The computer is there to uh, 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 do the arithmetic for you. Um, okay, so I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed the first lecture. Um, hopefully uh, I'll get better at this as, as we go along, but 